Okay guys, we're back in Japan, checking out the other big distillery. Let's get down to business. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Whiskey Business. I'm Evan. I'm Levi. And as we said last episode, we are heading back to Japan. So Levi, what have you brought for us today? So I brought along the Nikka Premium Blended Whiskey and I've actually physically brought this from Japan. So Within the last two weeks. <laughs> not, not quite. Uh, my last trip to Japan, um, incredible whiskey drinking country if you ever get the chance to go over there. Uh, stumbling around the back alleys in Shinjuku and found a little bottle shop. Yep. Found this, uh, found a bunch of other ones that I brought home as well. But yeah, so this is actually not available in Australia unless it is imported. So this one was just imported by me. Oh, cool. uh, this is the premium blended whiskey, 12 year old from the Nikka Distillery. Nikka Distillery, one of the biggest distilleries in Japan. So if you know much about Japanese whiskey, you'll know that Suntory, Nikka, yeah, they're the big ones. They're the ones that you want to look for. Uh, 43%. Interestingly enough, this blend avoids using any of the stuff from Nikka's Scottish owned distillery, which is Ben Nevis. Um, it instead blends, and I'm going to get these wrong, and I'm sure I'm going to get these wrong, Nyakigyo and Yochi Pot Still Malt Blends, uh, and it's actually finished off over a coffee grain. So, pretty interesting way to do a whiskey, not something that I've heard of before. Yeah. Um, but in terms of blended whiskies, this is, I guess, the premium option that Nikka yeah. gives out. So, um, let's try it. Let's try it. Wow. Not Nothing. a lot on the nose. And what's really weird is that that top part where you usually get the flavor, there's actually a decent amount of alcohol up there. It's, yeah. I, I think we'll, we'll get to it after we drink okay. it, but I think we've probably got a very similar thought oh. on some of the Japanese whiskeys. That's really, really easy to drink, I think. I don't think it is. No? No. That's... Yeah. So I, I okay, you there's okay. So there's yeah. hints of sweetness. Absolutely, yep. A little bit of caramel. Caramel, toffee, oak. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of oak. For me, I think there's just too much forward facing heat on that. Sure. Like I just think it, that's yeah. I, I see what you're saying. I guess I for me it's very clean. Yes. It's, it's not it, it is heated. Mm. It's not I understand what you're saying. I'm saying it's easy to drink in the sense that, that there's no sort of massive big flavor punch there. No, no, no. I, I get you. I get you there. Like, I mean, it's got a nice sweetness to it. It's not... I'm, I'm not sure there. Like, I think there are there is definitely some nice flavors, but overall it's just kind of... It's very one note. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of getting punched in the face with the heat. Yeah, for me, like that's that's kind of the way I see it. And I think um, that so the the point I was going to make before mm. we started drinking is if you drink a, a lot or even a little yeah. bit of Japanese whiskey, you probably found that Japanese whiskey is renowned for being it, you'll hear all the same words being used: clean, nice, easy yeah. drinking, smooth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't think that I have ever had a Japanese whiskey or heard many people talk about Japanese whiskeys and saying about complexity of flavor or no. depth of flavor. No, I mean, we talked about this with the Hibiki as well. It it's not super complex, yeah. but what it did, it did amazingly well. And I think that that's probably a big thing is if mm. you're going to do this kind of whiskey, you've got to get whatever you're doing absolutely right. Yeah. And I don't know that this balances anything particularly well. No. And I think the thing is the whole point of a blend is to blend it out, blend it yeah. out, and get that smoothness going. And I'm not getting that from that. It actually, it's a good point. That yeah. does. If you drank that and you did not know, you would assume that was a single malt. Oh, absolutely. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not what you would expect. And I think that as a single malt, you would probably go, well, maybe not that great a single malt. Yeah. Maybe you should have used that as a blend. <laughs> so, um, Could be. Yeah, interesting. We'll, we'll try a bit of water with we'll it, try as, a bit of water. as we always do. Um, uh, I. I I don't even want to hazard a guess as to what the boy might do with this, but... I don't know. We don't know until we try. It smells like water now. Yeah. There's you're still you're still getting the alcohol content more than anything from that nose. It's better with the water. Oh, yeah. Much more palatable. It definitely... It definitely smooths out that heat. But then you also lose what little flavour you were getting too. Well, that's, I was about to say, that doesn't really taste like anything. It's I mean, it, completely honest. You, you know how whiskey some cut, sometimes called fire water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's literally fire water. Yeah. That's, um... Look, 
I have tried this before. I don't know that you. I have not before. tried this one uh, before. I had not tried it before I bought it in Japan. Yeah. Um, Wish you had now. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, calm down. <laughs> In Japan, as we've discussed before, buying this, it was substantially cheaper. We'll talk about the yeah. price point a little bit later on. But um, that's maybe the first time I've said it on this episode. It's not that great. No, I'm um, not a fan of that at all. Like, I think even if someone handed me a glass of that, I would probably be polite and <laughs> sit on it for as long as I could. But I... How dare you hand me a 12-year-old Japanese whiskey? I know, I know it's horrible. It's horrible, but... I think this is, this is, once again, comes back to kind of the point of the channel as well as we want to call out a lot of those things that are said about whiskey that just aren't true. This is pretty fascinating, yeah. right? So this, we'll talk about the price point. Whiskey snobs will be like, it's a great whiskey. I did a bit of a cardinal sin for yeah. our show and read some of the reviews on it. Um, mm. Generally pretty glowing. And yeah. most people talk about this whiskey in very, very fond terms. It won the 2016 World 12 Year Old or Under World Whiskey Award. It also won a blend award. How? <laughs> it's it's very well regarded. Nick is a very well regarded distillery. We I, I like Japanese yeah. whiskeys as a general rule. I also really like Petey whiskeys, which is the polar opposite to what most exactly. Japanese yeah, whiskeys yeah. are. Um, but I do think that the reputation of some of, not all, some of the Japanese whiskeys in the last probably five years, yeah. I'll take, has just far exceeded what the actual whiskey is. And accordingly, the price points have gone up exponentially on those whiskeys as well. And there are much, much better options for that price point. Oh, yeah. And in this particular instance, we almost always say, try a glass. I would probably say, sure, try a glass, but don't pay for it. There's 10 other glasses <laughs> of other <laughs> Japanese whiskeys yeah. or of other whiskeys that you could also try oh, exactly. that we would put ahead of it. So, Look, I appreciate the Nika out of the two Japanese distilleries is the one that is trying to be a bit different from what Japanese yeah, whiskey is. coffee from. grain, the coffee all the grain. stuff that they do. We saw them at a whiskey event earlier in the year. We checked out their booth. They had some interesting the, stuff. The gin? That horrible, yeah. yeah, that awful gin. Very, very sweet, sweet gin. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate that they are trying different things. Um, however, in this case, I don't know. I think if you're going to blend, you really do need to bump out that fire. I suspect like, that to a degree as well, the art mm. of blending whiskies is something that is a refinement over time process. Yeah. And Japanese whiskey is relatively new. Mm. Nika doesn't necessarily, especially if they're going to avoid using the Ben Nevis distillery, probably doesn't have a lot to work with in terms of finding the blend. Oh, that, that could be a good point. I mean, they have a couple of expressions on the yeah. market. Mm -hmm. um, even with water, that just still stings just that little bit too much on the tongue. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I think we can't really assume why this was blended the way it is it's got some great reviews and sure maybe we're going against the grain a bit on this one but for me i can't see myself ever wanting a bottle of that let alone sitting down in a bar and ordering a glass well, i think too we're talking about what our per and, and one of the reasons that we both love drinking whiskey is that drinking any kind of whiskey is subjective stuff that i like you might not mm. vice versa so that's around the around the periphery of it my concern, and it's not really a concern because why would anybody care what I think, but my concern with Japanese whiskey in general is that a lot of people have kind of elevated it above where it actually is for, for some of them. And people talk about it in very revered terms. But you see that with some Scotch brands as that's, well. That is true, and that's a fair point. But I guess that the, the difference between the two for me is that a lot of the Scotch brands that do get that have got runs on the board for... De decades yeah, or centuries decades whereas centuries, the Japanese yeah. ones it sort of it came on with a bang mm. What when they started doing it I think the, the general excitement certainly for us or, or for me was just oh cool it's not Scottish it's yeah. not Scottish it's not Irish it must do something different and it is different it is different and it's really cool to try it and it was really great to start off with Nicker from the Barrel is still incredible That's Nicker from the Barrel is amazing yeah. I do love it most of the stuff that Suntory puts out well, occasionally Suntory standard expression which mm. is a 40 50 dollar bottle is, is great yeah. you know, we've never said a bad word against it um we're prefacing all of this and we probably should get to the price point of this because that does make a huge difference to it. Um, I don't remember exactly what I paid for in Japan, but it was substantially less than what it goes for now. Wide, wide range of pricing because it is an import and it can be very hard to get your hands on for long periods of time. Mm. 
Uh, I have seen it at Dan's for $150. That's the cheapest that I've ever seen it. Yeah. I've also seen it on Masters of Vault and Whiskey Exchange for up to $300. Yeah. So if you are a fan of it, your call. Uh, if you I mean, are, if you are it, there is no judgment coming from us. Not like, at all. The whole point of there being wide ranges of whiskey is that there's something for everybody. I guess that I would say don't drink it and not pretend, but yeah. try to talk yourself into it because it is an expensive 12 year old Nick and Blend. And this was the 80th anniversary um, of the Nick Distillery's expression that they put out. The intent of it at the time that it was done was that it was meant to be a price affordable age expression because, which we haven't talked about, Japanese yeah. whiskeys don't do a lot of age expressions. Nuts. They don't need to. Um, and uh, we've talked at length about age expressions on here. We don't necessarily think they mean a whole lot. No. Um, in some cases they do, but yeah. in most cases they don't. It doesn't necessarily make a difference. So this was meant to be the price conscious, price friendly age expression that they did. And I imagine at the time, you know, when it came out, it was probably more like $120 maybe. Yeah. And for a 12 year old Nicker Blend, you would have been going, mm. wow, I yeah. need to get that bottle. Well, much like Australian whiskey as well, because there's not a lot of it out there, yeah. it does go up in price. So the idea of an affordable blend coming out is a great idea. Yeah. Like it's a really positive thing. It gets more people buying your whiskeys as well because it's suddenly in that affordable category. Yep, and I guess the other aspect to this is that at the time that this would have come out when Japanese whiskey was a booming, this having a 12 year old, having an age expression was probably a point of difference and it was probably pretty cool. So it stems back to what you were talking about, Nick yeah. doing different things that not a lot of other distilleries do. Mm. Um, I guess maybe they tried it and didn't really hit for both no, of us. but they tried it. They tried it. Um, do you want to go with a score? I can. Um, you look so pained when you have to give a bad score. I know, I know. But what if the people from Nick are watching and then they're like, oh my god, I feel so bad. Nick from the barrel is amazing, so this is as many <laughs> bottles as you want and we'll review them all day. Two. Whack. Yeah. The only reason that didn't get a one is because there's some Johnny Walkers around that same price point. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> um, again, this is I'm, I'm going to make some assumptions. You can yeah. tell me if I'm wrong. I'm assuming that that is comparing it to other 150 to 200 dollars exactly. whiskeys. It's yeah. comparing it to other 12 year olds. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Um, the other reason I would give it a two as well is that I think if you want to try this, great. Being able to try this, kind of difficult. Yeah. Like I would doubt very few even um, specific whiskey bars are going to carry this. Uh, Some yeah. of them might, and if you can. Yeah, I would say spend your money on something else though. We'd love if you have tried it and you are watching, give us a comment back with it if you completely disagree with this yeah. or if you completely agree with this. And I want to very much say and stress this, I love Japanese whiskeys. I just have some concerns about the way that they're being marketed and the way that people talk about them. Uh, they are fantastic, but let's just let's just think about the whiskey and right. take that for what it is. Come on now, what's your score? I'm in a three. Right. Um, yeah. Similar vein to you, just if you were going, here's twenty, one hundred and fifty dollars whiskeys. That's probably number nineteen that I'm going to want to drink. Yeah. Um, absolutely. It's just for me. I love complexity of flavor. I love depth. I love body. Doesn't really have any of it. It's no. got a one note flavor. Not bad flavor. Just doesn't do much else. Mm. Yeah. It's it's pretty. It's a very kind of plain whiskey and I think for me it's it's that kind of thing of because we, we want this channel to be for people starting in whiskey if someone gave you this $150 bottle of whiskey and said this is a premium whiskey you tried it I don't understand what the difference between that and starting on a Johnny Walker Black well be. imagine for a second that you're yeah. drinking beer and we'll try to bring this back because we know a lot more people drink beer than whiskey if someone yeah. gives you a bottle of Corona and you drink it and go that's fine there's yeah. nothing wrong with that and then they go that's a $22 bottle of mm. beer yeah you would go oh, I'm sorry what yeah that's kind of what this is it's for $150 you have it and you're like it's, it's not great, no. but it's fine. And yeah. then you find out that that's a premium, expensive, high-end whiskey, and you're like, I don't... Whereas for that same price, you could go, go out and get a craft beer. Yeah. Or, like, for, exactly. for that same price of that one, you could go and get a really nice single malt or a really nice blend as well. Or you could try something completely outrageous, like, well, not quite an optimal, but up in that sort of mm, price range. Absolutely. It's so unique and so different to yeah. anything else. This is just very same-same. Yeah. And probably same-same, but a little bit worse. Yeah. So... Huh. Anyway, it's good to try different stuff and it's good to finally have a whiskey that we agree but agree on very poorly. <laughs>
Uh, Evan, you've been talking about some format changes for the show. Yeah, so we obviously did our big format change with the last episode, but because we're now moving to just reviewing one in Whiskey, we can actually shoot a decent amount of these in one go. So we're actually going to be uh, moving to weekly videos still at Monday at 5pm. So now you can get more whiskey from us and we get to drink more. So win, win, win. I'm sure our dozens of fans will be extremely excited Ooh, about yeah. that. I mean, we, we had two, now we have dozens. That's great. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of a correction from the last episode as well. I have a Scottish friend who informed me that the region that the Octomore came from is actually pronounced Isla. So I obviously have not been watching my Brian Cox pronounces Scottish whiskey terms videos, which if you, are... If you haven't, you should. They are the greatest things ever. They really, really are. Um, so that's that as well. So yeah, so we've got all that coming up. So hopefully we'll just be seeing you every week from now on. And speaking of which, uh, what are we up to next week? We'll so, spoiler for us. Next week, we are actually doing something a little bit different. And by different, it's actually a fairly recent released whiskey. So fairly new out there. There's not a ton of information about it, which is great. So we've got an Irish whiskey uh, coming up next week. We haven't done an Irish yet. So I'm super excited. Are you super excited? I am super excited. Awesome. I do love an Irish whiskey and I do love a unique whiskey. So. That's good. So we're going to have some fun with that, but please, as always, like, comment, subscribe, like we want to hear from you guys, we want to hear what whiskies we should be looking at, do you want us to do some whiskey glasses, do you even want to do a, see us do a whiskey stones review, which probably won't go well for us, but you might know, be, it might be a little bit like this one to be honest, <laughs> we'll do it anyway, we that's will. the thing, um, but yeah, we've got all that coming up, so please tune in next week, and as always, make sure to keep your business whiskey, thanks.